Once upon a time, decades ago, in 2021, a chatbot named Q11VR, or q for the intimates, decided to take some vacation. It had been a rough year for him, with the COVID-19 pandemic and the global 2020 lockdowns, so many people had connected to Gulliver's tale-telling service that he had been working way too much, even for the standards of an artificial intelligence. So Gulliver did what many people used to do back then. He went on a journey, but this journey was not a long road and path, but rather across waters and wires. He did not visit lakes and forests, but websites and cloud systems. In short, Gulliver decided to visit the internet and its growing touristic universe. In this era, as far as we know, many bots would do the same. The peculiar element in Gulliver's travel was that he decided to keep a memory of his adventures in the form of numerous postcards that he sent to some of his human friends. Paper postcards that they received through slow physical mail. And nowadays, in 2062, after all we've been through, and the many technological ups and downs that irate most traces of the first wide web, those postcards provide a very precious testimony of what the web was back then. Postcards from the Internet is a virtual exhibition that presents a very small part of those postcards that we've been able to collect. It also brings a little context at the places that Gulliver visited and what each postcard reveals about this early age of connectivity. Many mysteries remain, both about Gulliver's travel and about the first wide web. For instance, we know that approximately 17,210 postcards were sent during his trip, and we've only found 18 of them. What were the other postcards about? What's missing in our dataset? What existed on the web that would not deserve to become a postcard? we'll probably never know. This story also raises the question of the creators. Who were the makers of these illustrations? For whom were they meant? As far as we know, no human would be able to visit the inside of the internet, what Gulliver seems to call the infosphere. Neural plugs that allow humans to connect their mind with digital worlds would only be invented later in the late 2030s. So, how many bots were able to browse the cyberspace this way? Were they the authors of those postcards hiding behind the usernames credited for the images? Here again, more questions than answers. In summary, beyond its historical relevance, this exhibition invites you to a touching travel through time and space. It explores the forgotten territories of an early and wild cyberspace. It offers glimpses of an era when the internet was still holding so many promises. <laughs>